Hello everyone, I'm Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. You're watching the dimensionality reduction series and today's video is on understanding the various non-linear transformation techniques such as kernel PCA and QDA. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. So let's get started. In our previous videos, we talked about various dimensionality reduction techniques such as PCA, LDA. We understood what's the math behind those specific algorithms. And also we talked about a small use case that was a breast cancer prediction use case. That was a classification problem. And we tried to implement PCA and LDA separately. And we saw how the accuracy was fluctuating. Now, if you haven't seen these videos, or if you haven't uh, if you are not much clear about PCA and LDA techniques, please go back to my channel, go back to my playlist, have a look at it and then come back to the kernel PCA part. So today's video, as I said, we will be discussing about the non-linear transformation techniques. Now PCA and LDA are basically linear transformation techniques and KC, uh, KPCA and QDA are meant for the non-linear non transformation techniques. Okay, Me only meant for uh, using a non-linear separable data set. Now, honestly speaking, the main idea in this particular session is that we know that PCA works well for linearly separable classes or data sets, right? Now, what about the non-linearly separable data sets? Because as most of our real world problems or data are actually not linearly separable. So in most of the cases, PCA or LDA might fail or it might not give a desired output. So that is the main reason why we have come to this particular session, come to this particular technique called as kernel PCA. Now kernel PCA basically uses a kernel function to project the data set into a higher dimensional space where it is linearly separable. Let's try to take a very small example. There is a, there is a predefined data set within uh, sklearn. We will try to see how the data set looks like. We will try to implement PCA in that and then we will try to implement kernel PC as well. So let me create a new file. So the data set is basically called as make moons. So if you can Google it out, you will definitely find the data sets. But yeah, as I said, it's already present internally inside the sklearn library. So let me import all my libraries. So these are the basic libraries which I usually use and mostly everyone uses. So quickly, let's import sklearn.datasets. We have to import the make moons library. Okay. Now let's try to create x, y equals to. So n samples means how many samples do I want? Randomly, it will be taken. 1500 2000 whatever you want to choose you can choose i will pass a different parameter called as noise so let it be 0 0.02 there is no such thumb rule for noise but noise basically means uh, the standard deviation of a gaussian node added to the data okay let's try to run this program and it is successful let's try to plot it and uh, c equals to y that means if you don't pass c maybe your data points will not be able to you'll not be able to uh, show which one is for which class now if you just ignore this particular field if you plot it it will be like this we will not be able to identify what is our target class right so based on the target class this is how the data looks like now it is clearly visible that the data is separable, but it's not linearly separable. Now, if I draw a line around it here, let me just copy this image. Now, let me try to d divide it based on a linear transformation. So if I do like this, that means I'm, 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 I'm 
telling that this is my class one and this is my class two. Obviously, we have these many as my outliers for class two. These much are my outliers for class one, right? Similarly, you can see that this image, like this particular data set, is not linearly separable. Even if you do any any kind of technique, it's not linearly separable. So we will try to use PCA and see if PCA is able to separate the classes or else is it able to project it in a linearly separable, separable manner or not. We'll try to see using two PC components. Okay. So I have just created, let me, let me create. So we have to use the SQL under decomposition. We already have seen, right? While we were doing PCA, we had done this, right? SQL under decomposition import PCA. Similarly, we'll have to call PCA equals to, so something equals to my, I'm, I'm instantiating my PCA. I will pass n components as two. And once that is done, let's say I'll make it PCA.fit transform. I'm just transforming my X value like, I don't care about the test and train split right now. I just want to transform everything. And once that is done, okay, SK learned. Okay, once that is done, I'll try to project it. Let's give a title to my plot. Let's say PCA transformation. I'll just copy this. So instead of X, I will just make it XPCA. XPCA C equals to Y. And let's give some X label. PC, PC1, PC2. Okay, I'm giving my X label as PC1. Okay, it's label and it's label. And then plt.show. Now, if I run this particular problem, if I run this particular example, you can see that my PC transformation is done. So my X axis is my PC one and my Y axis is PC two. Now, if I just copy this image and again, take it back to my paint brush. Let me just expand it. Now, still you can see that this data is not linearly separable. If I just differentiate like this, it still has some outliers, right? Now, Let's try to let's try to use this particular example and let's try to implement the kernel PC and see whether the kernel PC components are able to separate it or not. I'll just simply copy this code and yeah, I'll have to copy this as well. So kernel PCA is also present under sklearn dot decomposition kernel PCA. Here I have to in initiate my kernel PCA. I'll mention it as KPCA x underscore kpca kpca dot fit transform and here there are some minor changes let's give uh, there is something called as kernel okay we'll have to provide the kernel now kernel is nothing but we can provide various values kernel is something like we want to so basically kernel pca is something it, it's an algorithm which basically uses a kernel function to project the data set into a higher dimensional space. Now, as we are dealing with 2D data right now, in some dimensions, in some higher dimensions, the data might be linearly separable. So that's why we, we are using a kernel function. So I'll have to pass some kernel function here. For the time being, we can pass RBF. So there are different kernel functions like linear, RBF, poly, sigmoid, and, and a lot more. I'm just arbitrarily trying RBF and then I'll pass my gamma value. Now, if you are not clear with all these parameters, you can simply Google kernel PCA with uh, a keyword called as sklearn. So it will take you to the sklearn's uh, location, sorry, the sklearn's website and you will be able to understand each of the parameters. Now, gamma is no nothing but it's a kernel coefficient. Like as we are using RBF, so it is basically a RBF coefficient for this particular uh, case. Okay. Now, once that is done, I'll just call my fit transform underscore X run this. It should be successful. KPCA instead of KPC, I'll just change it to K uh, sorry. Instead of PC, I'm just changing it to KPCA. That's it. Q 
KPCA one, KPCA two. So let me just project it. Now you can see that using KPCA, we are able to, you know, differentiate the data. Now, if I like visually, we can we are able to differentiate it, right? As we can see now, the data is linearly separable in a n-dimensional space. If I just put a line here, this is my class one, this is my class two, or vice versa. This can be my class two, class one, and uh, sorry, this can be my class one, and this can be my class two. So this is one class, and this is one class. That's that's the main idea. But this particular data set was meant for KPCA. But coming on to the real data sets, when we are dealing with a real world problem statement we are not able to visualize the data in a 2D space or a 3D space, right? 2D space, sorry, uh, we are able to visualize it in a 2D space, but as we have more number of X variables, let's say we are dealing with a problem statement where we have 40 features, 40 X variables. Are we able to project it? Are we able to uh, plot it in a graph? No. So, you, like, I would say that it's not possible for our, uh, like for us to identify whether this data will be linearly separable in some dimensions or not. Okay. So in real world scenario, uh, in real world scenarios, we have to try all the algorithms. We have to try PCA, we have to try KPCA, uh, QDA, LDA, everything. And we will see how the accuracy is deviating, which one, mo which model is behaving well. So ultimately when you, when you are done with your KPCA thing, then you have to call your classifier. Okay. Now, if I just run this particular example, maybe what I'll do is I'll just copy this PCA code, maybe duplicate it and yeah, duplication is done. So from the code's point of view, it's going to be super simple. Just a one liner change. Now I have changed the code to KPCA here. You can just have to change it to kernel PCA and then KPCA equals to KPCA. Here you can pass your end components. You can pass your kernel. I'll pass kernel as RBF and gamma value as 0 0.02. Now, now these are these are some of the parameters which I'm just uh, sorry. Gamma is equals to 15. Right. Now these are some of the parameters I'm using. If you don't want to use, you can keep it like you don't have to use it. It will take the default values. Okay. Now KPCA underscore fit transform X train KPCA dot transform. So let me run this KPCA. I'm not pretty sure if KPCA, let us remove this. We don't want and compared equal to two something, something logistic regression. Okay. Should be okay. Okay. Let's just run this. See, uh, from the code's point of view, it's going to be super simple. Like once you're done with your feature scaling and train test split, you'll have to call your features, uh, feature extraction uh, process. It can be KPCA, it can be PCA, whatever it is. And then once you're done with the transformation, then you have to call your classifier. And then on top of your classifier, you have to predict on your text data. So you have to feed in your training data and test on your uh, test data and then compare the results. That's it. So here we got 87%. Let's go to the PCA part and see PCA is also providing us almost the same results, right? So this is how it works. In real scenarios, we have to perform different steps. Then only we will be able to identify whether uh, LDA or PCA or KPCA is the right choice. Okay, so that's it for the KPCA part in this particular session. Let's quickly jump into, so this is the same thing which I was just showing you. We had used the main uh, make moon data set, interleaving circles, you can see. And PCA failed to distinguish the two classes, but kernel PCA did a very good job. Two classes are linearly separable. Now, only visualization is possible when we are dealing with two variables. When it is more variables, obviously we cannot visualize it, right? So we just have to blindly call our algorithms or call our techniques and run it. So the next topic is all about uh, quadratic discriminant analysis. Now, what exactly quadratic discriminant analysis is? Now, QDA is very much related to LDA. So let's talk about uh, quadratic discriminant analysis. Now, this uh, particular image actually helps us explain about uh, that basic difference between LDA and QDA. 
Now, the data with fixed covariances, you can see that LDA and QDA does a good amount of work. I would say you can either go with LDA or go with QDA, doesn't really matter because they are able to distinguish between the various classes. Now, the data with varying covariances, you can see that LDA has put a straight line. You can see in the blue area, uh, there are a lot of red dots. You can say these are called as the outliers, which has wrongly predicted. Same goes with the second class, which is the red class, also has a lot of blue points. That means LDA is not a good choice when the data is having varying covariances. Okay, that's basically your real world problems. Our real world scenarios are actually like this. We do have varying covariances. Our covariances are not fixed with data. The same example, the fourth graph actually tells us how QDA has distinguished between the different classes. You can see it has put two different areas. So the blue area is basically the class one and the red area is basically class two. As compared to the counterpart LDA, QDA has done a great job. So QDA is basically termed as one of the non-linear transformation technique, whereas lin uh, linear discriminant analysis, as the name depicts, it's a linear transformation technique, right? So just one, uh, uh, just want to make some something clear. The left graph, I would say the third graph, basically shows some data from two different classes with linear decision boundaries found by the LDA, right? Whereas the right plot shows quadratic decision boundaries. Okay, so these were basically obtained by finding linear boundaries in n-dimensional space. Okay, so the dimensional space can be x1, x2, uh, x1 square, x2 square, x1 cube, x2 cube, something like that. That's basically why it is called as a quadratic discriminant analysis. Okay, now these are the basic differences between LDA and QDA. Coming out to the code part, again, as I told that code part is going to be super simple. I already have written the QDA part. Let me just quickly walk through the code and then we will run it in front of you. So everything remains same till our train and test split. Here, let me, let me open the LDA part as well. So these codes will be available in the description below so you can download it and practice. You can see the only difference between LDA and QDA is this, basically this part. So here I'm calling my linear discriminant analysis. I'm calling N components and then I'm doing fit transform and I'm doing a transform on the test data. So fit transform is basically we have to pass training. Uh, uh, so X train and Y train, right? Because linear LDA also takes care about the target variables. Similarly here, I have just created QDA. QDA is also part of discriminant analysis library. I have just in instantiated it and then I have called my fit method. I'm passing X and Y. So here there is no such technique of, you know, fitting transform and all those things. We just have to fit it. And then we have to call the classifier on my training data and on uh, on the model, on the classifier, which has been trained on the X train data and the Y train data, we have to call the predict function to predict the test data. Okay, let me just, just run this program and we can compare it with LDA's results. So the same technique, I would say uh, in LDA was, we got an accuracy of almost 96%, 66 uh, zeros like predicted and actual uh, non-cancerous and 44 predicted and actual cancerous. So 110 out of 114 were correct. In QDA, we are able to get somewhere around 107 out of 114. So the accuracy is 93%. So, so that's, that's all about QDA. In the next class, in the next video, I would say, uh, which will be released in a couple of days, I'm planning to take down a real life example where we will be showing you how to implement all these techniques and see which one of them is good, making a small analysis and then going ahead and building the model. Okay, so stay tuned. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching this playlist. Please like the video if you like the content, share among your friends and subscribe to my channel. Keep supporting. Thank you guys.